Ahoy! Welcome to Rocky's Model Railroad. This time we'll be taking a look at two Norfolk and Western locomotives which have received additional lettering, detail, and weathering. Originally this video was just going to feature Pacific Locomotive number 578, uh, but then a few weeks ago I was helping a friends run an art booth. The art booth was across the street from two of my favorite model train shops, and uh, afterwards I went in, I saw this Y6B, it was 40 bucks, and I couldn't help myself. Uh, so there's going to be two engines in this video, uh, both in this video because they both use similar techniques and the same sheet of decals. Now with locomotive number 578, I have a bit of a personal connection to this locomotive. I've obviously been drawing it for a little while, and uh, I just find it to be a very interesting machine. I like the personality that it gives off. When the engine was new in 1910, it was considered big and powerful to be sure, but it was soon outclassed by bigger and significantly meaner looking engines. By contrast, it has a very gentle but elegant and stately demeanor. It's fun to draw anyways. The model of 578 here started life as an IHC model of a generic 462 type locomotive. The details on the model are fairly bare bones, and it's not an exact match for the engine I'm trying to make, but I think that it's roughly the right kind of shape and because it's so sparse in terms of detail, it works to its advantage because it gives the modeler added creative freedom of room to add or change details to suit a particular engine. In this case, I made the front ladders a bit longer and uh, rearranged the dynamo on the top there, put a different bell on it, otherwise left it mostly alone. Oh, and an exposed throttle as a Norfolk and Western thing. The big reason I went for this model, though, as the basis is that underneath the very basic plastic shell is a very smooth and reliable mechanism. Oh, and by happy coincidence, this model already had the right number and road name. But the font is wrong. Like, not quite right. And uh, it bothers me, so we're painting it over. Anyways, we're going to be redoing the paint and such anyways. Eh, no real big loss there. So as I say, we'll be redoing the numbers and such, but that'll happen at a later step. The first step here is going to be doing the locomotive smoke box. I had to take the bell off the front of the engine here, and I made a few other small alterations. Uh, to cover this, these uh, scars and such, I'm going to be repainting this part of the locomotive first. On the real locomotive, the metalwork here is directly exposed to the fire in the boiler and gets rather hot, so high strength graphite or aluminum paint would have been used. As such, it has a very chalky sort of finish in real life, and to mimic that look, I mixed in a little bit of gloss and matte finish with this paint to give it that sort of look. On smooth areas of locomotives, like the boiler jackets, cab sides, and tender tanks, I like for there to be a smooth, uh, shiny finish underneath. This gives the effect of real metal, and on a lot of preserved locomotives you can see this, but obviously, a working steam locomotive, especially a coal-fired engine in West Virginia, none of this would stay clean for very long. I find that having a slightly shiny finish underneath all of the weathering paint helps to make the dirt look more noticeable. To do this effect as well, I use a slightly lighter mix of dark gray and brown and such to make the road dirt and cinders on the sides of the locomotive sort of stand off from the black, and it's all done in places where it would make sense to. So oftentimes I'll get along the wheels and the lower edges of the locomotive and also right across the top of the boiler. But on this one, because it's a passenger engine, I've made an effort to make it look like there's been an attempt to keep it clean. I do all the same sort of weathering on the engine and the tender to make it look like they go they belong together. The tender I've given 578 here is based on a shorter tender that it had earlier on in its career. Once all the weathering paint is where I want it, a coat of varnish protects everything. Once the varnish is dried, I cut out and applied some water slide decals. I'm including the Y6B in the video because the process, as I say, was very similar, but there is a difference in extent. Whereas 578 would be facing the general public and would have been kept at least somewhat clean, uh, the Y6B would have been filthy. Um, 
They were used to haul very long and heavy coal trains. And, uh, well, well, here's a picture. Yeah, they got dirty. So, here's the model. I've always wanted to try heavily weathering a steam engine, and this seems to be a great candidate. It just looks way too clean, doesn't it? Oh yeah, and also this one was painted for the wrong railroad. It's in Santa Fe colors, so I might as well repaint it anyway. However, on this locomotive, I've decided to unweather it to start with. It's not a barroom brawl, it's a barroom tidy. Unrumble! <laughs> I gave the entire engine a coat of satin black, just to help the plastic parts look more like painted steel. On the real engine, the boiler jacket goes all the way up to the very front of the boiler. Now, this is actually a mistake on the more expensive versions of this model in more recent years, where the front of the smoke box is painted in graphite, when on the real thing, the very front edge of the smoke box is the only part that should be graphite. The next step is going to be adding numbers and decals. Same process as last time, but annoyingly, the decal sheet did not have the numbers 2, 1, 9, or 7 next to each other, so that was a bit of a pain to do. While I'm at it, I've also used a brass paint pen to pick out some of the details that would have been uh, done in brass, such as the whistle, the safety valves, and the front of the number plate. It's amazing how much detail is actually present here on such a simple model, it's just that a lot of it wasn't painted originally, and it was harder to see. To be completely fair, even on more modern models that are gorgeously detailed, if they're just done in flat black, it's really hard to appreciate a lot of the detail unless you're looking really, really close. Now, you might be asking yourself, Rocky, why are you making it so shiny? Didn't you just say it's supposed to be really, really dirty? And, uh, we're coming to that. So, with the numbers applied... I put some gloss varnish over a lot of the decals and such to protect them. And uh, here's the fun part. So I made a very watered down mix of dark gray cinder colored paint. And then we, uh, and we doused the whole engine in it. And then we rub most of it off to look like there's been an attempt to clean it. What this does is it takes most of the cinders and cinder colored paint off the boiler except for in places where it would be impossible to clean in real life, like edges and nooks and crannies. And that brings out a lot more of the detail, makes it easier to see. And so we did that for, uh, fairly lightly the first time around. And because this is a really dirty engine in real life, we're going to do it again. And because, you well, know, it's still looking a little too clean, we're going to do it again. And now with it looking completely, absolutely, unrecognizably filthy, I think that's about right. Now, the one detail that is missing on this engine right now are the marker lights. Uh, but fortunately, because they're already, they, this engine, this model just didn't come with them, I can have some really nice little brass ones installed. Uh, but those are still waiting to arrive. For the time being, though, this locomotive, I think, is looking a lot better. Importantly, the Y6B here also plays nicely with the other Malay articulated that I have, which is a Proto 2000 Y3. Uh, the Y3 is a much newer model, and um, it is a much better puller of the two. And In fact, I would say that the Y6B often gets pushed a little bit by the, the Y3. Uh, but unfortunately, because it is a much newer model and more detailed, um, it's also very brittle. And the part of the reason I was able to afford mine at all is I think the previous owner might have dropped it. Uh, because the bell was missing, some of the valve gear is gone... Oh yeah, and then the, the tender drawbar uh, disintegrated. Currently there's a uh, twisted piece of metal holding the two halves together, uh, which is part of the impetus for looking at the Y6B model, because while it's much older and simpler, uh, it's less likely to get snapped in half accidentally. Um, but I like both of them.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed a look at a few of my scale models. If you like seeing what I'm up to, I'd appreciate your support by watching some of my animated stuff shown here. I have a new cartoon in the works which features steam locomotives, an interurban car, and a road roller. It's taking a bit longer than usual to produce, but I'm just making sure it's just the way I want it before it's released. Well, thank you folks for watching. Goodbye for now.